Hi everyone, I'm going to share a little bit about myself, about the company, and about our latest API. So get excited for that. Um, there you go. First a little bit about me. Um, I started my career working in microfinance for a company called Kiva that some of you may have heard of. They're just down the street. And this is really important because for me it was this first moment of realization that financial services could actually do a lot of good in the world. You know, as a kid growing up, I was kind of naive in many ways, and I just thought of finance as this like evil, horrible thing. Um, and I got to Kiva, and I realized how, how incredibly wrong I was and how powerful it could be if you gave people the tools they needed to succeed and manage their finances. So I spent a lot of time in Central America. That's a volcano in Nicaragua. Um, and I loved Kiva, and I loved what I was doing, but I wanted to learn more about kind of this world more broadly and what the financial services sector meant outside of this nonprofit. So I went to Berkeley and kind of went in the exact opposite direction of where I had been. I spent a summer investment banking at Credit Suisse. I quickly realized that I'd gone too far in the opposite direction um, and ended up at McKinsey and Company serving mostly banks and payments companies. And we can't talk too much about our clients. So this is a picture of my dog, Henry, who I'm obsessed with. Um, and I was at McKinsey for a couple of years and realized that, like Adam, I missed being an operator. Um, I like doing stuff and building stuff and trying stuff. And so when I was introduced to Nova Credit and I learned about the mission, it was really clear that this was like kind of the, the next step in my journey. And I lead um, customer success there, which means um, all of our enterprise customers, um, I uh, spend a lot of time with them and try to get them to use our product and love our product. Um, I'm actually going to talk about something a little bit different. Well, I'm talking about our product. Um, but it's not necessarily my realm, but it's something that I'm really, really proud of. And that's kind of the new version of our API. But before I get there, I'll share a little bit more about Nova. So this is um, our actual co-founder. Her name is Nikki. Many of you may know her. She grew up in the UK. She came over to graduate school um, at Stanford. And um, she was someone, she's a very responsible person. She had two credit cards back home. She had years of rental history. Um, she had student loans. She um, would have qualified for an auto loan. She probably could have gotten a mortgage. And then she moves here, and she does not exist. She cannot get a credit card. She cannot get an apartment without paying you know, thousands of extra dollars as a security deposit. She certainly couldn't have gotten a mortgage or a car lease and um, kind of realized at that time, along with her other co-founders, really what a problem this is. If you are an expat and have lived overseas, or you're an immigrant or a newcomer to this country, you do not exist. You know, imagine moving to a new country, um, and you're like, okay, what do I need? I need a couch. Like, what are you going to walk around with, like, $5,000 in cash to buy your couch? Like, that's what, you know, you have to do that, um, because you don't have those opportunities here. Um, and it's not just Nikki and people who are buying $5,000 couches. It's really, actually, I have no idea what kind of couch Nikki has, for the record. Um, it's really um, a much broader problem. There are about 46 million immigrants in the United States today. About 10 million of them are recent arrivals, um, meaning they still have potentially a very viable credit history in their home country. And most of them are exactly who you want to be lending to. These are responsible people. They are here to go to school, to start jobs, or they're accompanying their family. Like These are the people that you want to lend to. Um, and more than that, they need a, you need a lot of stuff, right? Beyond that couch, you're thinking about credit cards, you're thinking about auto loans, kind of really any and everything to get your life started in a new place. Um, and so this really is where Nova Credit comes in. So the traditional credit bureau model is if I'm a lender, I'm going to go to one of the big three bureaus in the United States. So that typically means Equifax, Experian, or TransUnion. And I'm going to pull someone's domestic credit history, and I'm going to use that to approve their application. But if I'm not from here, I don't exist. And so this is really what Nova does, is we build APIs into um, overseas credit bureaus where that data does exist. So all of these companies, they have um, partnerships overseas. So there's a TransUnion in Canada. Um, there's also an Equifax in Canada. Um, the, we, so you can think of us as really like building these pipes into all of these bureaus and then bringing that data back into the United States, reformatting it in a way that is um, compliant with U.S legislation and then enabling banks and other lenders to use that data so they can underwrite people who are new to the country. Um, so a little bit about our model and what we do. Um, our core product is called the Nova Credit Passport. This is an example from um, Canada. So you can see a lot of attributes that are really similar to what you'd expect to see on a U.S. credit report. There's a score um, and we've put that on a 300 to 850 range which is exactly what you would expect in the United States. 
Um, there are key metrics that give you at a glance a sense of um, is this person a risky borrower or not. Um, this is just the first page. It's usually a pretty long document, but there's kind of detailed information on what credit cards or trades does this person have? Have they paid on time? Um, you know, if someone is delinquent or in a bankruptcy status, we'll share all of that. Um, and it makes a lot of sense and sounds, sounds great. Well, it is great in theory. Um, but it produced some pretty complicated questions for our engineer, engineering and analytics teams as we were figuring this out. So, OK, like how exactly do you build a US equivalent credit score? Um, and it gets really tricky when you start to think about how broad our network is. So today, we're able to pull in credit data from nine different countries. Um, and we actually work with 12 bureaus. In three of our countries, we have two different integrations. So for those of you whose um, flag knowledge is a little out of date, um, we have data from the UK, Brazil, India, Canada, Mexico, China, Australia, South Korea, and Nigeria. Um, and when we first built this product, um, well, we had a V1 of our API, but that was like very, very early days. Um, actually, I'll take a moment. Um, I feel like people in this room know probably more about APIs than I do. Um, but really, it's the way that we um, pull in data from our overseas bureaus and then format it and then can share that with big enterprise customers. So it's, um, so it's the actual credit data in that form that they can ingest programmatically. And originally, when we were building this, the thought was um, every single data point is really important. And we don't want to lose any of the richness of a credit report. And so we're going to put it all in there um, because it has meaning or it might have meaning. Um, and the problem was that it meant there were thousands of fields that we might return to a customer, many of which weren't especially relevant in a US underwriting context. So um, to bring it to life a little bit, I'm going to give you an example. Imagine a friend comes to you and says, I want a $1,000 loan. You're like, OK, maybe. Um, but you probably want to know something about their credit history and their behavior. So let's say your friend gives you this. They have a gold loan, a used tractor loan, a mobile banking loan, a Christmas loan, credit card underwritten or from a grocery store, a chattel loan, which like, do you even really want to know what a chattel loan is? Um, and then I, I'm sure I'm going to do a not awesome job of pronouncing this, but a Prime Minister Jan John Yojana overdraft situation. Um, so apologies if I've um, offended anyone with that pronunciation, but this is a lot of the data that we get back from our bureaus. And so the question is, what, what do you do with this? What does it mean? And how can you translate this into something that will be meaningful for um, American Express or a bank or a mortgage underwriter. Um, and so this is really where V3 um, of how we thought about and ingested the data comes in. So the idea with V3 is we care a lot less about exactly what a loan is for, and we care a lot more about what are the attributes of this loan and how does someone behave. So for example, is this a type of loan that's collateralized against an asset? Is this a loan that is a revolving credit line, or is this an installment loan? And once you start to put together those patterns, you can actually, instead of returning thousands of fields, that is frankly um, complicated for a US institution to understand, return much closer to 30 fields. Um, that's both flexible enough to capture the array of data that you're receiving from these nine countries and 12 bureaus, but also concise enough to still capture that meaning in and, out and allow someone to underwrite in, in that US context. Um, I was going to talk about everyone's favorite topic, which is credit utilization metrics, but I, I don't know how we're doing on time. Um, I guess I'll give, give a quick no, example. Two minutes? Two minutes? Yeah. Okay, I can do this in two minutes. Um, so this is an example of why this matters. So credit utilization is a concept, if you're applying for a credit card, your bank is going to want to understand of your current credit cards, how much, what is sort of the total um, amount that you have available on those credit lines, and how much of it have you used up or spent. And so anyone who has a high credit utilization, it's probably a really risky customer. It probably means they've maxed out all of their credit cards, and now they're applying to your company for a credit card because they're they kind of out of resources. This is not a person you want to approve. 
Someone with low utilization most likely means they've done a good job of paying back their balances every month, um, and it's someone who is like exactly who you want to be giving a credit card to. So in this sense, it's really important that you understand which of someone, which items on a credit report are a revolving loan. And if you get that wrong, then you're potentially telling an underwriter um, something that doesn't actually enable them to fairly understand or judge the risk of this applicant. So whether or not NOVA labels something as a revolving loan is actually really important to make sure that we get that right. Um, and so a little bit about how we did this. By we, I mean um, these people. None of them are me. Um, this is our engineering and analytics team. And so in the last year, um, essentially they went through and reread every single piece of documentation from 12 different bureaus, in many cases actually going in country, sitting down with the score developers and understanding exactly where all that data comes from. Um, sent I confront literally thousands of emails um, to the bureau to really make sure that we were understanding all of those data points that were so unique and so different from the US context, and then comparing them to one another, saying, OK, Brazil does this, the UK does this, Canada does this. What's the common theme, and how can we um, interpret that and use our judgment to, to condense it into something that will be true and understandable? Um, and then we did this 12 times for every single one of our bureaus. Um, so it's been a big year for us, um, and especially for those of you who follow the news, you may have seen that a couple weeks ago we announced our first um, kind of major partnership with American Express. So they are using the new version of the API, um, and it's really enabling them to do something pretty incredible, which is they're doing real-time instant decisioning of immigrants in this country based on our data, um, and in part based on all of the changes that we made to the API. So here's, um, they actually built a, a landing page on their website about, no, well, not just about NOVA, but um, about immigrants and kind of how they're serving that community, and then a little bit of the press coverage around that launch too. So thank you.